Hey there, everyone. Uh, Dr. Alan Korber with you from uh, Royal Canin. Uh, great to be here with you again. And today I, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about what you can expect when you bring your pet to the veterinarian uh, right now. If you had to make an appointment for something from a preventive nature over the last few months because that was the time of year that you brought your dog or cat to the vet, then you probably either canceled or put that off. And it's important, obviously more important from an urgent care standpoint, but from a preventive care that we make sure that we are now addressing the needs that our dogs and cats have from a preventive medicine standpoint. Because across the country, for the most part, restrictions have been lifted and veterinary facilities have been able to offer a full service hospital again since the end of May. And since those restrictions have been lifted, you know, clinics have also seen a real surge in appointments. That's taking its toll on the veterinary staff and uh, veterinarians in the clinic. So you want to be patient for sure. But things that we want to be thinking about, especially at this time of year at clinics across the country, for the most part, is the concern at this time of year about ticks, fleas, and heartworm. Most places at this time of year would already have their dogs and cats on some kind of preventive flea, tick, and heartworm preventive, and uh, fleas are ramping up right now. Ticks are, are active throughout the year, and so we want to be mindful also of the mosquitoes that can bring heartworm to predominantly our dogs, but to a lesser extent our cats as well. So that's one reason. The other reason is that an annual checkup, which for many dogs and to a lesser degree cats, will have taken place at this time of year. And so, you know, things like preventive medicine uh, to be able to detect certain things can only come about by way of an exam, which brings up one of the things that is most common in pets. In fact, over 85% of dogs and cats above the age of two years old will oftentimes have dental disease. And while people might look in their dog or cat's mouth to have a proper dental examination, that has to be done by a vet. Many clinics are offering, at least on a triage basis, possibly on a recheck basis, if something is not absolutely necessary and they are slammed because of all the preventive appointments that are being sought, that they may uh, offer a virtual appointment. And that's something that they couldn't do in the past and many clinics are now set up for. You can expect that possibly some personal protective equipment like I was wearing uh, might be worn by the veterinary healthcare team member or the veterinarian when the appointment's happening. More than likely someone will come out to get your dog or cat either from your car or curbside and then bring the animal into the clinic. That might not happen across the board, but you can uh, definitely expect that more often than not. And then it might be the kind of thing where your clinic has a limited amount of product within a hospital which you're not used to, uh, pet food. That's the kind of thing that they've often enhanced their online stores and so you can order online. It may be delivered to your clinic. They may have set up a, a delivery uh, type of scenario right to your home. So definitely the kinds of things that you want to ask about. You also want to be proactive. If those answers are not able to be given because the clinic is so slammed with the influx of preventive appointments, and so you want to ask some of the following questions. Do I need to be wearing any personal protective equipment? Am I going to be allowed into the hospital? And if not, which oftentimes is the case right now, am I okay to wait in my car? Can I hang out in the area so that I'm accessible easily by phone call or text? How many animals, how many pets are allowed to be brought in at once? And then in the event that perhaps my animal's going to be admitted into the hospital, what can I expect in terms of staying in touch and communication? Lastly, and, and this is kind of across the board and we're all trying to be mindful uh, of this, try as best as we can to be patient, kind, and understanding of the veterinary hospital team. 
whether it's the front office, the veterinarians, the veterinary technicians or assistants, they've been trying to figure this whole thing out. They've been maintaining urgent care up until late May. And so lots of stress around the whole pandemic scenario in terms of still being able to be the dedicated healthcare professionals that they are. Give them that, that empathetic sort of approach so that we make their job a little bit easier and they make the process easier, not just for our pets, but for us as well. So thanks very much for joining us and uh, we'll talk to you soon.